Hey, Sean here, and this is the Ethernet adapter for the CCM1, which offers new camera control possibilities for the Alexa Mini LF, the Alexa Mini, and the Amira. All right, just a quick update about the CCM1, which you might have missed from last year. We introduced software 5.5.2, so make sure that's on your CCM1. And in there, there were some big changes, the biggest of which is that we've increased the brightness for single cable operation. Now, that means if you're just using the VF cable on either a Alexa 35 or a Mini LF without any additional power cable. We used to have the maximum brightness set at 100 nits, but now we've changed that so that it can go up to 35% of the maximum brightness of the monitor. And you'll see that change reflected in the menu. That means that the maximum brightness with one cable is now more like 500 nits, which is a huge improvement and really makes this almost completely daylight viewable with a single cable. Of course, you can get significantly more than that when you add in an RS in power cable. The second change is that on the Alexa 35, which I have here, you can now double tap anywhere on the display to trigger a sensor level punch in in the spot that you double tapped. And then if you'd like to you know, rearrange where the zoom in is happening, you can move the little orange box around in the bottom right hand corner and then double tap to go out. So then you still get a full 1080p image on the monitor, but obviously zoomed into that sensor level resolution. The third thing is that we have introduced a waveform tool to the small HD page OS. So on any of the pages for your monitoring feed, you can now have a waveform which was previously missing and obviously highly requested. All right, let's look at the Ethernet adapter. This is the Ethernet adapter for the CCM1, which is now available. And it basically allows you to get camera control from the CCM1 when you're not using the VF connector. Why would you want that? Well, on the Alexa 35, there are two VF out sockets on the camera. So you can run the viewfinder, the MVF2, and the CCM1 at the same time, both using VF, and then they both get full camera control. On the Alexa Mini LF, we only have one VF connector. So if you want to run the viewfinder and the monitor at the same time, you would then need to set up the CCM1 with an ethernet adapter to enable camera control. It will also work with the Alexa Mini, the classic Super 35 one, and with the Amira, and we'll get to that in a second. So just to explain what I've got going on here, we have power connected to the RS in socket on the monitor, and that's actually a three pin RS to a two pin Limo cable that I'm using here, just to show you that you could also power this monitor with DTAP if you want, 10 volts to 34 volts, totally fine. The second cable is here, of course, it's an SDI cable, that's where we're getting the video signal to the monitor from. And then over here, we have the Ethernet adapter. Now that's screwed into these two little holes at the bottom, which are also for battery plates. And it's basically going into the USB socket on the camera. And we have a little yellow boot here because yellow is for camera control, like with the VF connector. So that's going into Ethernet. And then here I have a nice little custom right angle RJ45 connector to the 10 pin Limo socket on the back of the camera for Ethernet. That socket is exactly the same on every ARRI digital camera. So all the way back to the Alexa Classic, you'll have to fact check the D21 for me. Um, but that little Ethernet socket, the cable has been the same forever. So any Ethernet cable that you already own will work in this configuration. Now, that's probably a bit longer than you need. We're not going to introduce a shorter Ethernet cable. There are many on the market already. For example, Small HD, they already offer one because they offer the camera control license for their Cine 7 and other monitors. So they have this kind of guy. There are many other available. So you just need an ethernet connection and then we have a little bit of setup to do. So in the monitor, if you go to the menu page, which is the page all the way to the left and scroll down to accessories, you'll see the camera control option. When you get into that, there'll be two options. One for ARRI, for Alexa 35 and Mini LF. And this setup is exactly the same and the camera control capabilities via ethernet are exactly the same for those two cameras. And then there's also the legacy option if you'd like to use this with an Alexa Mini or a Mira. But let's start with the Mini LF. If you touch on the ARRI camera control little button there, then you will get a display which needs an IP address and a password. If you touch on expand, you will actually get a little slideshow which shows you the instructions for how to set this up as well. So I need an IP address and a password. 
So if we go into the menu on the camera here and scroll down to system, we have two options. We have camera access protocol and then network and Wi-Fi. In the camera access protocol, you just need to make sure it is on. It's off by default, so just hit the enable cap server button. And then if you go into the cap server password, you'll notice that the default is ARRI, which conveniently is the default after a factory reset on the CCM1. So I don't need to change anything there. In the network and Wi-Fi settings page, I can scroll past the Wi-Fi. It doesn't matter if Wi-Fi is on or off. And then it's easiest if you set the LAN IP address mode into a static instead of DHCP. DHCP will still work, and that's how we will set it up if you connect the um, CCM1 to a network. More on that later. So I've changed the IP address uh, mode to static, and then the default IP address is totally fine. It's 192.168.0.100, which is also the default on the CCM1. So actually, from a completely fresh factory reset, just make sure cap is on, make sure the static IP address mode is set, and then I can press connect. And then it takes like one or two seconds for this to connect, and it will take me straight to the home page of the CCM1. So from here, I have exactly the same level of control as I would if I was using the VF connector. So for example, I can hit on this little ND icon here, change the ND and see it happening because I get to change all of those camera settings from the home screen page while looking at a live image, which is nice. You can see those changes happening in real time. On the left-hand side, I have my indicators for user buttons. User buttons are still supported via Ethernet. The only difference when you're using a CCM1 via Ethernet or network is that the menu from the camera is not supported. So I can't get into the full menu unless I'm connected via VF. But you can reassign the menu button to be another user button so that you then have five user buttons on your CCM1. Playback is also supported. So if I'm in any of the pages and I swipe down, I can go into the playback menu, see a clip list, all of that. Really, all of the functions of the CCM1 still work over the Ethernet adapter, except for full menu control. All right, let's look at the Alexa Mini. All right, here we have our old favorite, the Alexa Mini. And the CCM1 can support camera control now for the Alexa Mini and the Amira. The setup for both of those cameras is identical and it's very similar to a 35 or Mini LF. So on the back, we obviously have our ethernet adapter and I have that LAN cable here connected to the ethernet port on the back of the Alexa Mini. I've got power coming from the battery plate and vision over SDI. In the camera, I have to go in and make sure that it's set up correctly. So in the menu and then in system, I just make sure that the camera access protocol or CAP server is enabled. And you wanna make sure that the password is either the default of ARRI in lowercase or whatever you'd like to set it as. In the network and Wi-Fi settings, again, you can ignore the Wi-Fi, just make sure that the IP mode is set to static and that the IP address is set to something that you will then put into the CCM1. On the monitor itself, go into the camera control section and here you will select ARRI legacy instead of the standard ARRI protocol as we need the legacy protocol for these older cameras. In there, I would then add the IP address and make sure that the cap password is set correctly. And once you've connected, you'll go straight to the live image where you can see that the interface looks a little different. And that's because with the legacy mode, the interface is supplied by small HD. So the functions will be identical to those that you can do with a Cine 7 from small HD on a mini and a mirror. Alexa 35 and Mini LF, we supply the camera control and the interface there. But for the older cameras, that's all handled by small HD. Around the outside here, you can see that I can adjust the frame rate and the ND and all my other exposure settings. And of course, I can trigger the camera for recording and I can enter into playback mode. That is all supported with all minis and with the Amira. All right, let's look at some network possibilities with Wi-Fi. All right, to finish up this video, I just thought I'd show you some cool extra steps that you can take now that the CCM1 is a network device. Because we're using an ethernet adapter, it means that not only can you establish a connection between the CCM1 and a camera with a cable, but you can also add the CCM1 to a larger network which opens the door to making this a wireless control device. So in this particular instance, I have this fully completely standalone wireless CCM1 setup. 
I'm getting a video signal with my receiver here from the transmitter on the Mini LF and then I get full camera control. So for example, I can use those inter interactive status components to change the ND value. And of course I can change any of the other ones like frame rate, shutter angle, white balance, etc. I also get access to the home screen and to all my user buttons and to playback as well. And that's made possible because I'm using this little travel router in the back of the CCM1 here. That's actually getting power from the CCM1's USB-C port. And I've got a network cable connecting it to the ethernet adapter at the back. This little guy is a TP-Link travel router, but of course, any sort of little router like this would work. Or you might want to connect to a bigger environment that is being controlled by DIT, for example. But because I'm now using the Wi-Fi network of this router, I need to change the camera from being in host mode where it creates its own network to being in client mode where it can connect to another network. So in the menu, if you scroll down to system and then into the network and Wi-Fi settings, you need to change from client to host. So first turn the uh, Wi-Fi power off and then in the Wi-Fi mode, you can change from host to client and then you will be able to connect to a external network. You can browse through the available Wi-Fi networks by going into the Wi-Fi network menu. And you can see here that I've already connected to the dual net, which is the Wi-Fi network from my little travel router. Now, I just want to point out that these LAN settings here, they won't affect anything to do with the camera when it's in Wi-Fi mode. So you cannot set a static IP address when you're using the internal Wi-Fi capabilities of the camera. The IP address will be given by the network that you're connected to. So we need to find out what that is. And we can scroll down to the info page in the menu and then network info to find that. And you can see our Wi-Fi IP address here, which is what I need to put into the CCM1. This is only the same because the camera is the first device connecting to my little travel router's Wi-Fi network. When you're connecting to a larger network with more devices, it will likely be something completely different. So we need to take note of that Wi-Fi IP address. And then you have exactly the same kind of control as you would if you were using an ethernet cable between these two devices. Again, no camera menu because that's only available from the viewfinder connector on the camera. So I'm kind of interested to see what you can do with that yourself. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the section down below and we'll see you in the next one.